The city we know now is filled with neon lights. A prosperous and crowded city as one of Asia's biggest economic centers. With a population density ranking second in the world, to survive under the social pressure has led to amazing films from Hong Kong. As a Hong Kong born Gen Z, I used to pay little to no attention to Hong Kong's entertainment industry in general. The Gen X would disagree though, where they would rejoice over old movies and songs where Hong Kong was at its golden age. This triggered my inner curiosity, where I am determined to discover the rise and fall of the Hong Kong new wave. Before we get started, let's talk about the backstory of Hong Kong. Hong Kong has a mixed culture between the East and the West. Back in 1898, Hong Kong was leased by the British from China as a result of China losing the Opium War. Therefore, Hong Kong has become an economical powerhouse, being the gateway of China. Mainland immigrants flooded into Hong Kong for economic prosperity, therefore combining traditional Chinese culture and Western culture. Hong Kong was later finally returned to China as a special administrative region in 1997. So, what is the Hong Kong New Wave? Hong Kong New Wave is a film movement in Chinese language in Hong Kong cinema that emerged in the late 1970s and lasted into the early 2000s, and it is named after the French New Wave of the late 50s. Prior to the new wave, Hong Kong's film industry was already well recognized for kung fu action flicks. In fact, Hong Kong was thought to be the only one to go up against Hollywood at the time. Well, there are actually multiple waves to the Hong Kong new wave. But there are two general waves. The first wave and the second wave. The first wave started at the late 1970s where Hong Kong film industry began to flourish due to the widespread success. Many of the new wave directors had a western style education and were influenced by western filmmaking and culture. Film of the Hong Kong new wave aren't actually stylistically similar, but is a term to distinguish a new generation of filmmakers with a youthful willingness to take risks and take film as a serious art form rather than as an economical pursuit. Films of the Hong Kong New Wave utilize new technology and techniques such as synchronous sound. New editing techniques and production crews that would shoot on location, with or without a permit which reflects in the more experimental attitude of filmmakers at the time. Examples of the movies from the first wave would be Cherry Hark's violent cult classic Dangerous Encounters of the First Kind in 1980 and Alan Fong's Father and Son in 1981. On to the second wave. The second new wave is considered to have begun around in 1984, after the new wave began to gain attention from international audiences. The top directors would include directors like Anne Hui and Wong Kar Wai. Anne Hui consists of using the themes of migration to hint Hong Kong's flaws and identity, where one of her most famous films would be Twin Dragons from 1992. Wong Kar Wai has actually said something very interesting, and I quote, This is what the difference is between Hong Kong and Chinese cinema. Chinese cinema was made for their own communities. It was for propaganda. But for Hong Kong, films are made to be entertained, and they know how to communicate with the international audiences. This bold statement was actually backed up with his international success. One of his most famous pieces would be Chang'e Express, where not everyone would be able to understand, but it is structured around two consecutive stories, which both follow post-breakup cops' encounter with a mysterious stranger. This unique storytelling style paired up with the unconventional camera techniques has attracted an international audience's appreciation. This film of Wong Kar Wai is more on experimentalist approach where cooperating with Christopher Dolan's style of camera work has created an art piece where the long duration wide shots would give an uncomfortable feeling making the film truly different to the rest. For these films Wong Kar Wai also cast movie stars and singers where it would be 
able to boost the popularity of the films naturally, since the cancel pop scene was gigantic at the time as well, where Leon Lai, a cancel singer, was casted in his Fallen Angels. Wong Kar Wai also liked to use the city as a character where the focus would be on the loneliness of the crowded city than the people living in it. That is why his international audiences would appreciate his work. But this begs the question, what killed the Hong Kong new wave? The Hong Kong film industry saw a decline in the 1990s due to a loss of regional markets like Taiwan. The situation worsened during the first five years after Hong Kong became a special administrative region of China, as the city was hit by an Asian financial crisis which began in 1997, and of course the SARS epidemic. After that, it was really hard for the film industry to receive funding and have resources for filmmakers to experiment with, ending the era of Hong Kong New Wave. Wait, hold up for a second though. Is it really done? Hong Kong director Derek Cheng's youth drama Better Days is the rare Oscar Best International Film nominee. Released in mainland China in October 2019, the film grossed 40 times the total earnings of the other four international feature nominees combined. But there are sensitive topics in the film where it contains scenes that would portray China in a negative light. Therefore, not getting as much recognition as it should be. Even though there are possible restrictions in the new era of Hong Kong film, filmmakers could still create quality pieces where I believe Hong Kong film would rise again.